Would you believe that there's actually lots of stories out there of people being pronounced dead only to come back to life? A lot of these people claim they got a glimpse of the other side. What's even crazier is that a lot of these experiences differ. Not everyone sees the same thing when they cross over. So let's dive right in and hear some of these stories for ourselves. Okay, so this first story is pretty spooky. So if you're easily scared, don't say I didn't warn you. According to one woman, her husband was really on death's door while at the ICU. His condition was so dire to the point where he was so sick he couldn't be transferred to another hospital. In fact, the husband flatlined and had to be brought back by the doctors multiple times, and they really didn't expect him to pull through. I can only imagine how hard this must have been to see your husband revived multiple times by medical staff and then being told that he was probably not going to make it. That's heartbreaking. Luckily, she had some much needed support from the other families who were also going through rough times while their loved ones were in the ICU. One family really was there for her, even though they were also going through a really painful time as well. The grandfather of that family had just had surgery on his foot, but things had gone horribly wrong. The hospital had to amputate the grandfather's foot, but he still got an infection and ended up passing away. Just a really tragic circumstance all around. They could not catch a break. So even though they were going through something awful, the family still found kindness in their heart to comfort the other woman who was watching her husband go through the same thing. But amid all this, a miracle happened. The husband woke up and he told her he had seen something on the other side that even I can't believe. Her husband had told her that the whole time he was in a coma, he was actually walking around the hospital with someone else and that someone was an older gentleman who was missing their foot. Surely there's not a surplus of one-footed gentlemen out there, so what are the odds? What's even crazier is that the older gentleman told her husband to not worry, that his daughter would comfort the man's wife until he woke up, because it just wasn't his time yet. This story, to me, seems like it might be a clear sign that there is something unexplainable that happens after death. There was just no way for this man to know about the older gentleman that had just passed. His wife had heard the story while he was unconscious. It's a heartwarming story, and I like to believe there's a one-footed gentleman waiting for all of us on the other side. This next story delves into the experience of a child whose life was forever changed after she was resuscitated. Ingrid Honkala has a vivid memory of this experience, even though she was a small child when it happened. She was living in Bogota, Colombia, and her nanny was supposed to be watching her. But Ingrid and her sister managed to get out of the house and started to play near a tank of water meant for washing clothes. Ingrid fell into the tank of water and began to lose consciousness. At the same time, Ingrid's mom was at work, but her mom had an intuitive sense that something was horribly wrong, and she raced back home where she found her daughter in the tank of water. Ingrid says that her lips were completely blue and that she was at the very edge of death. While Ingrid's mom tried to bring her daughter back to life, Ingrid was transported to what can only be described as a different dimension. Ingrid describes this new dimension as being a complete black hole of nothingness, almost like a total void of sensory deprivation. Ingrid says that in this different dimension, there was no sound, no color, no movement, nothing. Instead, Ingrid says that there was a really profound sense of connection with everything, almost as if a total sense of understanding had flooded her being. Ingrid is a really articulate toddler. Even though Ingrid was only maybe three years old, she said she had a sense that everything was gonna be okay. This means that the other side that Ingrid crossed over to gave her a feeling of peace. It's amazing that she experienced such a thing while going through something so awful. And it's a good thing that Ingrid's mom was trained in CPR. As Ingrid was revived, she said she had a feeling that she was being pulled back into the realm of the living. Ingrid describes a sensation as becoming more and more aware of her physical discomfort, almost as if she was suddenly being transported back into her human body after floating in this kind of metaphysical space. Thankfully, Ingrid's mom managed to revive her and Ingrid was okay. But this experience of crossing over radically altered Ingrid's life because she found herself equipped with skills that she never had before. And not just experiences, but actual real world skills. You have to remember that Ingrid was still a really young child when this happened, but when she woke up, she found that she knew how to read, something which she hadn't previously learned. And at the same time, Ingrid claims that after waking up, she had the ability to solve complicated math equations as well. 
Even though Ingrid was so little, she claims she came back to the world with an awareness of the universe that few people ever get to experience. Ingrid says that her time on the other side gave her insight into the idea that humans have a spiritual, eternal existence beyond the confines of life and death. I can only imagine how something like that must absolutely transform your life. And this is a crazy idea, but I think all of us can benefit from an experience like that. Now, we arrive at the story of Jeffrey Olson, a Utah man who went through an awful tragedy on Easter weekend. Jeffrey was driving home with his family when he started to fall asleep behind the wheel while driving 75 miles an hour. That's when everything went terribly wrong. Jeffrey's car flipped several times and he was knocked unconscious by the force. When Jeffrey finally woke up, he realized the worst had happened. His wife and infant son had been killed. Meanwhile, Jeffrey's injuries were absolutely dire. His intestines had been ruptured by his seatbelt and his back was broken. By the time he arrived at the hospital, Jeffrey's legs had to be amputated. Jeffrey had to undergo 18 surgeries, spending over six months in the hospital. In the aftermath of his devastating crash, Jeffrey struggled to find answers. You can only imagine the difficult thoughts going through Jeffrey's head as he wrestled with the guilt of causing his wife and child's awful, sudden end. For years, Jeffrey struggled with opening up about how he felt about all of this. But when he finally did speak about it, he claimed to have experienced a super consciousness in the moments after his near-fatal car crash. Jeffrey even says that his soul left his body in that moment. What's more is that Jeffrey claims to have communicated with his dead wife while being enveloped in a glowing bubble of light. In that moment of super consciousness, Jeffrey said that his wife encouraged him to go back to the land of the living, asserting that he couldn't stay with her because he had to be responsible for their other son, who also survived the car crash. Apparently, Jeffrey and his late wife had a whole conversation where they discussed what it would mean for their other son to be orphaned. Jeffrey was really taken by the sense that he had a choice in the matter, and that even though it was in the middle of an out-of-body experience, he still had the ability to exercise free will. Jeffrey describes the sensation as a floating feeling, and that he had the sense that he knew everyone around him. This included the hospital staff that were working on saving his life that he had never met before. Jeffrey says that he felt a profound oneness. That must have been a really tough thing to go through, communicating with your late wife and realizing you'll never get to see her again. Jeffrey seems at peace with his choice though because he got to be there for his other son, so it does have somewhat of a happy ending. Well, that's our last story about people who experience the threshold between life and death. I'm dying to know what all of you think of these stories. Do you buy them? What similarities do you see between these different experiences? It's such a rare and one-of-a-kind thing to go through. Do you know anyone who's gone through something like this? Have you gone through something like this? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Kaylin with Story IRL. Catch you later.